Almost. So we got some parts in yesterday evening for this thing, lots of parts. Uh, we got a used steering column. Now this is supposed to be off a Le Mans. It was on eBay. So it's a used steering column. Uh, I took it outside and pressure washed it. Made it a little bit more cleaner because it had all that dust and dirt. So it's been drying. Uh, what else we got? We got a true grade fuel pump. I know that fuel pump will be trash. I've never heard of true grade before. Must be some kind of new company. Uh, we got some cherry bomb glass packs. I'm going to try and put these up under there where the pipes are cut off. Just try and put these little shorty tray bombs up under there. I don't know if it's going to work. Try and quiet it down a little bit. That way we can hear something. Uh, this is the uh, bottom, I believe. Top or bottom radiator hose. I got to go find either the top or the bottom. I think this is the top. I got to go find the bottom. Getting parts for this car is kind of a headache. Uh, what else we got? Another cherry bomb. Glass pack. Got some fuel line. I got some header connectors, but I think they're the wrong size. They're manifold pipe connectors. So, what I'm, my plan is today is to get this steering column unwrapped out of this box and see if we can get it in the car. Because pushing this thing around with no steering wheel is not fun. So, I want to get this steering column out of here. Put the new use steering column in uh, then we'll be good to go on the ignition should work by the key which I think it does work by the key uh, it's just that you can't steer it I mean that's all wore out boogered up uh, we got a couple steering wheels to choose from we got a Pontiac Firebird or Trans Am kind of a 80s model this looks like a Pontiac steering wheel and this is probably the one that came out of it but anyway whichever one's gonna fit so <clears throat> basically gotta undo the steering shaft you can undo it by this little clamp right here pull it out or you can just pull the whole thing out I prefer just to undo this bolt and pull the steering column out that way but first we need to take this one out the box because you know how when you buy stuff off of eBay and Amazon stuff like that pictures don't always say they what they are so what we need to do is take this one out of the box inspect it make sure it's usable like the seller said and uh, get it ready to install. I believe this one is, uh, I think it's a black steering column. I'm not sure. Let me get something to cut that box open with. So maybe we can, uh, put the knife in. Gotta find something to cut the box with. Oh well, we'll just use a razor blade knife. Maybe we can. Paint it. I'm thinking it's black. I can't remember. I think Carol told me it was blue. Good. I think it was like a hundred and something dollars. 
for you, Mr. Ricardo. Really not bad. I was just hoping they'd get damaged in shipping because I see the box is already tore out right on the end where the steering wheel goes. It didn't, it didn't take that part up good enough. I see the turn signal handle. Oh, sorry, I already have a key. Oh, yes, please. It's a blue. Yeah, it says 70 Pontiac Lawrence. 70 Pontiac Le Mans. So that is the shifter. Hopefully, the threads ain't messed up. Nope. Got a key switch. Ew. Should be park. Is that off? Yes, yeah, working. We we'll have to put the ignition box off of the other steering column off here. So I said $100, $125, basically with junkyard charge, except you have to go pull it yourself, unless they pull it. I'm trying to find a stern column in a junkyard for anything old these days. It's really, really hard. So, it's a blue stern column. It's got the hazard switch. Ah, I wish it was it got kind of bingled up right there. Still turns though. I wish it was the same color. We could paint it black because trying to match that color, I have to try and go and find one. I mean, some spray paint that color. So we could just spray it black. I thought about just taking the. Uh, Taking it apart and just put the housing on there. But I don't know, we might just paint it black. So, anyway, that's the steering column. I want to get that in so it can be able to be steered around once we get it all running. And uh, even if we got to push it, we won't have to be grabbing onto the vice grips. So, I'm going to get the other steering column out. It's going to be kind of hard to put a camera in there. So I'm going to get the other steering column out, we'll get it on the ground, lay them side by side, change what we need, and then we'll get it back in the car. Alright, so I got the original steering column out, and <clears throat> I went ahead and took this shaft out. This shaft just goes all the way through the column. You can see where it's all ate up. Uh, so, I'm trying to figure out what to do. Either we paint this column, use this whole column, put the ignition box off of that one onto this one. Or, since that shaft slides right out, slide the shaft out of this column and put it back in the original steel co steel, blah, blah, steering column and put it back in. Because everything else on it works except for the key won't turn off. So I would have to take uh, the guts out of here and see what's uh, see what's keeping the key switch from going all the way off. Which this one works. Uh, needs a little oil on that key. So I might do that. I might just pull the steering shaft out of this one because it just slides right out. Stick it in. The original column, clean it up, and won't have to worry about painting it. Uh, just got a little paint. Uh, we won't have to worry about painting it. That way we can get it back in there. We won't have to wait till it dry and do all that stuff. And uh, should be good to go. Um, there's one wire that's broken on the plug. I can fix that. One wire. Uh, 
but uh, that ain't nothing. So that's probably what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna fix this column here. Why that key won't turn off. I think we can just go by pulling these three. Well, it's only well two in there. Phillips head screws. Somebody's, somebody's been in there before, so they have messed something up. Slide that out of the way. Actually, this whole thing just slide right out of there. We might just swap that too. But for some reason, Sin Park Sin Park, but I don't know if they put this key switch in there wrong. That's probably what it was. They put a new new ignition in there and they put it in there wrong so what we're gonna do we're gonna see if we can fix that uh, we'll see if we can fix it and then we'll just use this stern column here and it's the original one to the car so what I need to do I think you pull this little key buzzer piece out of there. Let me uh, get some needle nose. Maybe we can fix that one. Slide it back in there, throw the steering wheel on. We'll be good to go. Let's get some better lighting. See what we're working with. There we go. Let's pull this out of here. Pull that out and you should be able to stick a screwdriver. Well, you don't have to pull that out. It's been a while since I missed Virginia. You stick a screwdriver in this slot. There's a little slot right here. Stick a screwdriver up in there. Push in on that tab. And then it will pull out.
kind of a two-man job. Got the switch out. Let's see if there's anything wrong with it. I think you push in on it there. Looks like it's a bad key switch. Either that or they jammed it in there. You're supposed to preset these things. Well, I think when you get them, you're not supposed to turn them. Somehow. jammed up. I think they messed the switch up because it won't turn off to uh, that's exactly what happened. They jammed the key switch up. Huh. I guess we might have to use the other switch. Did they jam this one up? Won't turn. Well, I guess we'll just pull the switch out of the other column. It's got a key in it. Somebody put this one in there and it won't turn off. It's jammed up. Unless it's stuck on accessory. It won't even let me take the key out of it. Hmm. Well, we'll just take the switch out of the other one. We're going to take a... Uh, we're going to take the shaft out of that one anyway, so we might as well just take that one out and uh, hopefully uh, we can make it work because this one's messed up. So, I'm going to move this to the side. Let's bring this one over here. Pop this cover off. Now this right here is your horn contact. It's supposed to be like a little spring in there and a wire that twists into it. And that turns when you turn the steering wheel. But that's missing. It might be, I think some of that stuff is in one of those totes over there. It's the whole horn button assembly out of the other column. It might have a wire. Uh, we gotta take this off. It's a little snap ring thing. And it takes a special tool, which I have. So this one turns. The key just won't come out. Yeah, that's the original key. Alright, let me get this special tool. We'll break that one down and uh, get that shaft out.
of the uh, stirring column that was ordered. We finally can put that good shaft out of it until the original stirring column, it just slides right in the back of it. Like that. And then we can put uh, that plate lock it down after we get everything on there and put that washer on there feels good and free now I can put the key switch back in which that original key switch wouldn't work, but I think they won't work unless they're pushed into the column. And I think I see what the problem is. I think they jammed it in there. You can see how this one got the little tab sticking out and this one don't. So I think they jammed it in there and they messed up that little piece down in there that's supposed to stick out. I don't know if I can. There it is. There it was. Now I can't get it back out of there. If we can fix the new key switch up, I'd rather fix it. Let's see what it turned on now since that's back. Nope, it's still locked. Something's definitely wrong with it. We'll grease up. We'll grease up the old, the one that came out the other switch. Straighten the key out a little bit. We'll just use it. So I don't know what's going on. Look like they jammed that key switch in there. We'll see how it fits. Unless there's something wrong on the inside of this column. I think all these key switches are just wore out. Actually, I gotta turn it back off. It's not. Which is not turned off. It's probably what happened to the other one. They jammed it in there. There it goes.
that won't. <laughs> that one won't turn at all. This key is all bent. Yeah, but for some reason, this one won't turn off either. There it goes. Probably got some trash in there or something. So there's probably nothing wrong with the other, well, the other twisted little tab is stuck in there. I'll spray some luba -doob in there. What is all that racket out there? <laughs> Not ride with no exhaust. Yeah, we definitely put some lube or something in there because it's pissing up. Think we'll have to try to put the other switch in there? <laughs> I don't know. It might work now, but I doubt it. Something Something's hung up on it. I'm not going to change it. So I'm going to spray some lube in there. I'm going to get this steering column back together. Get it back in the car. And uh, I think we'll be good to go on the steering column. And start to work. And it had original column back in. And the steering wheel. Alright, so... Finally got the steering column in, got it all hooked up, got a steering wheel on it. So, <clears throat> out of the three steering wheels, I put this Pontiac one, kind of the older one. I don't think this is the original steering wheel because the original steering wheel would have had this type of horn button because it matches the interior. But the other steering wheels, <clears throat> it, uh, it didn't match. Um, well, we had that Firebird steering wheel, and then we had this steering wheel. But I, I don't. The horn don't work anyway. But I cleaned it up. I took off this uh, steering wheel cover that everybody put on back in the '70s and '80s. And uh, steering wheel is not even sticky. Most of these be all gummy and sticky, but it had that cover over it, so it protected it. So now it's got key ignition and uh, it is good to go on that so now I can get back to uh, the engine side of it and that will be putting the water pump on and getting the cooling system all buttoned up and then we can move on to the fuel system too so plenty more work to be done Thank you.
wanna be the best in the game. Invest in my name. Check no restraints. I'm obsessed with the pain. I ingest, I retain, assess, and I change. Possessed by the thought I'll be free one day from society's restraints. Money, clout, and fame. Mud disease, a plague. We all love to hate. Have to play the game. Have to make a name. All our insecurities are on this display. This is war with the enemy. Think that it was meant to be. Living in a time where disease is on every screen. I won't let them fester me. I know most are festering. Negativity is a plague for the mentally weak. No mercy. All I got is working. Never stop searching. Never quench the thirsty. I'm toxic and psychotic with this logic. You can't stop it. It's been chronic since I was a boy. So neurotic and chaotic. Go. I'm on it. I just wanna be iconic. Sipping on a gin and tonic. Got me going off on a mindless topic. Yeah, if I ever play, I want it. You know that I'm always honest. Stay away from those who are toxic. Keep by your face, no way you don't want it. Yeah. Don't try to drain my energy. The enemy is everything. It's mentally unhealthily spreading like a rare disease. But I won't let it get to me. I don't need your therapy. So as you see, I'm trying to get the water pump off, and those boats are rested. I did get, I think, one, two, three, four, five, five of them loose, two of them broke off, the last two I need to get loose is this one here, it's a 14, and this one here, and I, as you can see I've been heating up on this one for a while, and it just will not come loose, so I'm going to uh, continue to heat up on it. Try and get those last two bolts loose. Maybe it's enough, but we can clamp some vice grips on the rest of this one that's broken off and the one at the bottom and get those out. If not, it just has to stay like that. I believe we won't have a coolant leak. We'll put enough sealing on there around those holes and uh, we should be good because it's got a lot of bolts. But now the only last two, those are the ones that don't want to come loose. I try heating the block up back there so I'm going to continue to heat it up let it cool off heat it up let it cool off and hopefully we can get those last two boats out because this water pump is uh it's shot it won't even turn completely locked up we got a new one we just got to get the old one off and get the new one on there so after heating and lubing and heating and lubing this bolt here, I finally got it to turn, but it won't come out. So it didn't break off, it just won't come out of the water pump housing. I'm gonna try and put a screwdriver behind it. Maybe I can get it to push itself out of there. Got rust built up, rust built up on the back side. Ah, uh, it broke off, it broke off in the block. That sucks. It really sucks. <sighs> so that means I'm probably have to end up taking the whole front timing cover off and tap that boat out because 
that's one of the main well it's one of the big bolts that holds the water pump onto the front of the block and there's one more right here that's the same way uh, maybe I can save it I think the one at the bottom this one here if that one goes all the way through uh, we're in good shape Tried and tried and tried to get it out. I went through a whole map gas bottle and uh, I was heating up the block and the front of the water pump. I really don't want to have to take that housing off because I'm scared the other boats are going to be rusted. Now that's a short boat. But, I'm going to see if I can get that other one loose. You can't spray it down with a uh, lube because it's not going to go really through the threads because this is so tied up against the block and the water pump. I was going to say maybe you can drill a hole right there on top of the housing right where the boat goes and you'll be able to get some uh, at least get some PV blaster or something in there then I don't I don't think water will come through right here on top where the boat goes I'll show you what I'm talking about right Right here where this boat goes through the block, goes through the housing. If I was to drill a hole right here where I can maybe get some PB blaster in there. So that was the problem over here. See, there's no way to get any PB blaster in the boat so long. But maybe I can drill a drill a hole straight to the boat and spray some lube in there. Let it sit. Just trying to heat that block up that blocks uh, real thick and then that boat is probably pretty long uh, you can't get any lube in there so maybe I'll try that and see how that works so what I had to end up doing with this one stupid boat I had to take my angle grinder and I just cut like a slot right over the top of the boat because what it is the boat is rusted to this aluminum housing and uh, heating it up on the outside of that housing is the heat one transferring good enough to heat up that rust around the boat so as I was uh, grinding rust was just flying out of everywhere so I heated it up sprayed it down with some PV blaster and it's starting to turn now. I've just been kind of working it back and forth. It's got to go slow with it. I mean, it's a uh, <clears throat> it's a tedious process, but I don't want to risk breaking off another boat. I think it was rusted in the block and in this aluminum housing I probably melted the gasket on the back side of the water pump housing by now all that heat but we'll see once we get the new water pump on and get it filled up with some coolant and run it see the water pump starting to separate But water don't come through this area. That's just where the boat goes. So I ain't too much worried about it. What I probably do is just put some JV weld.
across here. And she's coming out now. Like I said, if I can risk not breaking off that bolt, I bet you that bolt's hot. I didn't want to use the impact because I was scared I was going to snap it off. But right now it's just stuck in the housing. It's a long boat. So it's out. So what I'll do is clean all this out, all that rust, and I'll stick the boat in there, lightly start it. I'll probably just put a new bolt in it. And uh smear some JB Well across there. Now the one on the other side, that's the one that snapped off too. Well it snapped off in here and when we pull this water pump off we might be able to uh, be lucky that's enough of it sticking out but it's going to be the same I mean it's going to it's going to be rusted to the housing and the only way to fix that would be to pull the harmonic balancer off and pull this whole front timing cover off and heat that bolt up that way and then clamp onto it with something because <clears throat> I think it's a lot of that bolt left. This water pump is locked solid. I looked at the freeze plugs, they didn't look rusted out like it set water in it. So hopefully it didn't set water in it. Crack the block or the heads. Went through two whole cans of PB blaster and Almost two bottles of that uh, map gas. Heating these bolts up. What you gotta do, what you gotta do. We won't have to work. Oh man, look at the rust. Ew. No wonder it wouldn't turn. So this thing definitely set with some water in it. That's not good. It's not good at all. <coughs> Bolt. It bolts way back up in there. So it's got this bolt here that bolts to the intake. It's got this one that goes to the block. And there's one here, a stud bolt, a stud bolt there, and two big bolts at the bottom. Holding the time cover. Yeah, that don't mean that the block is cracked. I get lucky. I say we well, won't know until we actually get some cooling in it, get the water pump running, and uh, and stuff like that. But that bolt there is not going to come out. So, <clears throat> what I'm going to do, like I said, I'm just going to put a new bolt on this side over here. And uh, we'll put it back together and run it. And if the block and everything seems fine, because no water don't come through here anyway. Once you put the bolt in there, I think the hole goes, some holes go all the way through the block. Some of them don't. But... 
once we tighten it up hopefully the gasket don't leak back here if it does that, that means I have to tear it all down put a new gasket but hopefully it'll hold up just enough to run this thing to see if we got any crack heads or crack block or bad head gaskets so I'm gonna finish cleaning all this rust up put the new gasket and stuff and water pump on and uh, we'll, we'll uh, cross our fingers and hope for the best now it's time to install the water pump finally uh, ran into a problem with the water pump the one we had before looked just like the original one but it was a couple of bolt holes short I don't know what year it could have came off of but it did not fit so we had to wait for a parts store to order us another one and this one right here is identical the other one had a shorter shaft so the only thing I gotta do is take those studs out and put them in there I got the water pump housing cleaned up all cleaned up and everything I tried to get those other two uh, bolts out of there that are broken but they would not budge so we're just gonna leave them they're more like dowel pins uh, this is the backing plate that goes on there's a gasket that goes on first sandblasted it not too bad so also we got a new fuel pump now this is the just manual fuel pump for all you millennials out there these older cars have manual fuel pumps and uh, it runs off the cam load right at the end of the cam shaft uh, on some of the cam shafts they had like a uh, I think they called it an oscillator I think the Fords had it it bolts right to the end of the cam shaft but on the uh, Chevrolet's it runs off the cam load and you can see engine cam you have a push rod style on a lot of your later model Chevrolets they had the uh, push rod that goes through the block and then that rod will run off of it and it's not just Chevrolet I think I think Pontiac had it too but this one runs straight off the cam so little cool thing shows you how it works this is their instructions so anyway I gotta put the new fuel pump on and because it's easy to access right now without the water pump in the way and that uh, power steering bracket so I'm gonna go ahead and put the new fuel pump on I gotta put the new fuel line on but we'll do that later because those are rotted and then put the water pump on and hopefully get ready to set a radiator off on this thing and uh, we can move on to uh, button up the cooling system I guess for right now we might just block off the heater core I don't know if it might leak or not but I, if I do hook it up I gotta replace this hose it goes all the way back to the heater box and uh, I mean that's a great way to see if the heater core is good uh, we got a new thermostat for it because that one is uh, that one's kind of toasty uh, it's in toasty shape so we'll replace the thermostat thermostat gasket and uh, hopefully we can like I said get the radiator and button up the cooling system and uh, we'll go to the back after I hook up the fuel line from the fuel pump to the carburetor go to the back put in the new gas tank and all that good stuff so I've been cobbling together an exhaust system for the Le Mans and we got a cherry bomb shorty muff and I picked up just some uh, two inch pipe and some two and a half inch pipe here actually this is two and a half to three but I'm going to cut this section off because I couldn't find a two and a half to uh, two so I'm just gonna cut this off and that's going to slide inside of the cherry bomb and we're gonna cobble that together 
I already got this side done. It took me a minute. I had to make a couple store runs, but we got this side hooked up. Got a hanger on there. Got it hooked all the way up to the pipe there. This is just because I was tack weld and everything. But like I said, this is just a temporary exhaust just to kind of quiet it down so we can kind of hear the motor run. Maybe we can ease it around the block a couple times. But uh, it's up there pretty solid. Ain't going nowhere. Just kind of tack weld the hanger to the uh, floor a little bit. I mean, it can be easily removed. So now we got to do the other side. But the problem with the other side is that uh, let's see if I can get one here. The pipe is so crushed on that side. So I'm gonna have to try and cut it back some to get it where we can get that uh, pipe up on there and uh, run it out. You know, like we did this side over here. So. I got a tailpipe expander. I might be able to cut some of that off and try and get the roundness back. And uh, I mean, one side might be shorter than the other side, but it, as long as we can get the exhaust hung on that side, we'll be good to go. So I'm gonna get working on that side and uh, see what we can come up with. All right, so the exhaust is all hooked up. Got the little shorty uh, cherry bombs on both sides. Hooked to the downpipe coming off the manifold. So now it's got somewhat of a exhaust. So we got to uh, go back there drop the gas tank and then run new fuel line from the gas tank to the metal fuel line first we're going to blow them out up to the fuel pump and then we'll be uh, moving back up to the radiator because I had to wait on a hose a flexi hose to come in because I couldn't find a, the right bottom hose to fit the aftermarket radiator and once we get that in there, we'll be ready to fire it up again and hopefully uh, the exhaust sounds quieter than running off straight manifolds and uh, see what it even go in gear. So. so we got some new parts again. We got a brand new Reman AC Delco alternator. Now this alternator here is a reman and this one doesn't have the uh, internal voltage regulator. This car being an early 70s model, it has the external voltage regulator. That's what that box is. And as you can see, the plug is totally different from your later model alternators. This one's got the little small kind of a uh, square one I guess you want to call it where this came with the alternator the later model one's got kind of like a flat kind of I guess rectangular shape I want to say so that's the late version version there that's the early one so we're putting on the early one now these was on a, like 70 back probably 72 back I don't know exactly when they went to the late model one, but this one here, got the plug, that's where your hot goes. I think this is where the ground goes. You got the battery, you got that. I only see, so that has to be battery volts. And that's the plug. I don't know what the little one is. I don't see another wire. But anyway, we're going to get that on there and finally get some belts on this thing. Get the fan on it. And I got to fix the lower radiator support where the radiator goes because that's broken off down there. I got to straighten that and make a bracket for it. And we'll get the radiator and the shroud in 
and finally get some cooling in this thing and see how the cooling system is going to be but we didn't have an alternator I didn't have one I only had the later model one the later one that has the internal voltage regulator didn't want to go cutting wires and because you could you could probably run this one it looks the same you just have to change the uh, wiring uh, which is really I think it's like one wire or something like that one wire runs from the alternator to the battery and the other one runs to the power so I can't remember but anyway I just wanted to go back with what came off of it because this engine is going to turn out to be a good engine after we find out if the cooling si system is working right it have the correct alternator on there so pick this up from Amazon you know they got everything you can find everything there's a part number GM part number so this is a GM reman AC Delco it even comes with a sheet with if you got a core you can send it in I don't know if they give you any money but got that and also it's got this book Prove AC Delco Alternator Performer Certification I guess it just shows how they rebuild them show you how they hook them up and how they should test so it's pretty cool there shows you how to test your voltage after you hook it all up that's a cool book so GM really threw it out there so that came with it that's it it even came with a brand new screw that goes for your adjustment it was in there like that and that book was zip tied to it so you won't even have to find a screw to fit that because usually people will put the wrong thread screw through there and uh, strip it out and then when you go to tighten down the alternator it won't tighten down and as soon as you go fire it up the alternator flips because the thread screw they put in there won't tighten up and strip out so comes with that and then come with the bottom screw which I think I got one I think that is it go through like that might be wrong no that's too big you have to find a right thread screw so that's easy so anyway i'm gonna go ahead get this alternator on there get it wired up and then we'll move on to the cooling system and uh hopefully the cooling system works out good i don't know about the heater core we're gonna bypass it uh we might hook it up later right now i'm worried about the engine block the heads freeze plugs stuff like that so let's get the cooling system hooked up, run it, put the temp gauge on it, and uh, if that pans out, then maybe later on we'll worry about the heater core, because I don't know what works in the dash or not. So let's do it. Well, we ran into a dilemma with the new radiator shroud. Number one, they don't come pre-drilled, so I'm gonna have to drill my own holes so they can be able to take the screws for the top. Number two, this radiator is really too tall, and you see it's, it's about all the way at the top, and there's not enough room to get those rubbers up under the radiator uh, inside of the shroud so I got the radiators picked up as high as I can but the rubbers is not going to fit number three this thing was cut from the factory but I can still I don't know why they cut it like that I can still make it work though. I probably scoot it over. And 
One more problem is at the bottom there's two holes with these little self tapping nuts. The radiator shroud is not flush up against the bottom of the metal down here. So I'm gonna have to see about that. My only other option now to make that work is to cut these little plastic tabs off that slides up on the radiator and then I think it'll let the shroud smoosh up closer to that lower part of the radiator uh, support then we'll be able to get some screws in it so I'm gonna play around with this for a minute and see if we can get that flushed up and then get those holes drilled so we can mount the shroud. I don't know why they didn't pre-drill the holes. Um, you pay all that money for that stuff. They just press it out and throw it in a box. So, But it's no big deal. I can drill four holes. I gotta drill some at the bottom too. And uh, get that button up and then we can put the fan on. All right, now we're at the back of this thing. The goal is now to get the new gas tank in and got in here and clean what's left of the trunk out. Uh, there's some trunk panels replacements up under that seat. But uh, you can see it's Bluetooth. <laughs> so anyway, this is the original gas tank because it's got 1970 on it. So it's never been changed out. It looks pretty good up here, but I think it's rotted out at the bottom. I want to say. Uh, no, nope. uh, it's smooshed at the bottom. Really bad. But we got a new gas tank. I'm going to have to get some lube on these straps. We got an old school gas lock top. Those were real popular back in the day. Because it was real easy to steal gas out of these cars and stick a water hose or something in there and siphon it out. But we got a new tank, so I got to get this one out. We're just going to put it in here temporarily so we can run it and drive it instead of uh, hanging gas cans and all that stupid stuff everywhere. I'm going to undo these lines. We got a new sending unit and uh. It's easy to get to the lines but for some reason they put the clips up here so if the floor was in it how would you get those uh, not clips but hose clamps off but anyway I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this out and get the new one in which is in that box over there and before I hook the lines up actually after I get the tank out I'm gonna blow through the lines I got them loose up there on the fuel pump so I'm gonna blow through them make sure there's no bad gas or rust or nothing in them I'm gonna be replacing these lines anyway so we'll get that out get the new gas tank in and uh, put the new hoses go up front hook the hoses up to the fuel pump and uh, we'll be ready to run it off its original gas tank well not original gas tank but we'll be able to run it off a gas tank instead of five gallon can or something so I'm gonna go ahead and get this dropped hopefully I can get those straps loose because they are looking really bad so here's the brand new fuel tank and we also got a brand new fuel sending unit so, in case you don't know how these work, it's actually like a potentiometer inside of here. And right now, the float is all the way down. So, if it was in the tank, it'll be sitting at the bottom of the tank like that. So, as you put gas in there, this float moves and there's a needle, like a potentiometer. It's riding on a circuit board. So, as this moves up, your gas gauge on your dash will move up. This will be half, and this will be off. Well, not off, but out. <laughs> so, 
we got a brand new one uh, it's, it's best if you're going to do these old cars sometimes you might get lucky and the original one be good but I didn't take it out of the other tank it's probably all gummed up not moving so we ordered a brand new one so only thing we got to do comes with a little locker ring just got to Put it in the tank. Put the little O ring in first. You want to make sure not to damage the float or the pickup screen. Just drop it in there like that. good when you work on new stuff and you turn the locking ring you might take like a small punch and uh, you just take the locking ring tap it around till it stops it's got the little tabs right there so you know it's locked in You want to make sure it's even too because you can get that thing off a little bit, the little ring, and it won't smush that O-ring all the way down. And uh, you might have a fuel leak, but I always like to make sure it's even. This is a ground wire, then your, your uh, power wire from your gauge hooks right here. And two fuel line and this one's got a breather tube that goes right here that points up towards the top of the trunk uh, I didn't know you still zoomed in but there's this little tube there's a piece of hose that goes on there and it points uh, up that's like a, a breather tube so your gas tank can breathe so Tank's ready to go in. I've already blew out the fuel lines from the front to the back. So, we're good to go on that. So, the next thing will be to get the tank in there and uh, put all the new fuel lines. Sorry about that. Put all the new fuel lines from the front to the back. You know, it's got the two back here in the trunk that goes to the sending unit. Then there's a two that go up to the fuel pump. One is the main fuel line. The other one is the return. And uh, it's got this little breather hose right here. Also, probably put a new piece in there. And it'll be good to go. So, gas tank is good to go. That tank there can go and scrap. It's dented up. Now you probably could fill that thing up with some air, compressed air, and probably can pop that dent out of there, but I guarantee you it's probably going to be all gummy and rusted up on the inside. It's probably going to have a hole right here too where it's starting to rust when it was against the trunk. So that's no good. So I'm going to get that in there and uh, get this baby uh, fired up, running on gas tank and put some coolant in it so the fuel tank is installed got a new gas cap we got a new fuel line back here uh, I blew through the metal lines all the way up to the front of the car where the fuel pump goes make sure they was nice and clean uh, we got the new <clears throat> rubber lines installed to the fuel pump right there so I was working on the shift linkage I finally got it fixed because somebody had ripped it out of the steering column and uh, so I got that fixed 
And while I was up on here messing with that, I noticed that the transmission mount is not even connected to the transmission. And the cross member is slid forward for some reason. Uh, but the transmission mount whoop, is completely, completely rotted off and gone. There's nothing there. So the transmission is just sitting on the cross member. So I'm going to have to jack up the transmission. I got a mount and put a new transmission mount up under here. I was wondering why when I put the fan on uh, the engine, the engine was looking like it was crooked because I didn't have very much hand space between the fan on this side and over there was a lot. So now I know the engine is actually uh, the engine is actually sitting in there very crooked. So I got a transmission mount. It's a used one, but it'll do the rubbers so so. So we will get the transmission jacked up and get the new transmission mount under there. And then I noticed when I was running it last time that I didn't have any transmission fluid flowing through these lines even though I had this bypass hose on there. And I can remember when we first started messing with this car it had some dirt daubers or some dirt in the hoses and I took like a uh, clothes hanger and ran it through there. I'm thinking these transmission lines are stopped up. So I'm going to have to disconnect them from the transmission and blow through them to make sure they're clean because it's got to have transmission fluid circulating through your radiator because this is actually your transmission cooler on this side. And uh, so I'm going to have to take those lines off, blow them out, and I hook them to the radiator. So other than that, we do that little stuff, then we can put some coolant in it and fire the oh I gotta install the oil pressure gauge and temp gauge so other than that <laughs> other than the brakes <laughs> we can put some cooling in it make sure this thing's gonna run not run hot make sure it's got water circulation and uh, make sure we got oil pressure so we should be good so I'm gonna go ahead get those transmission lines blew out get the transmission mount up under it and uh, Hopefully we can let it down and hook up that other stuff. So I got the transmission mount, cross member, all that bolted up, uh, wrestled with that. Now we got another problem. So with the transmission mount in the correct spot, the engine is now sitting level, but now my fan won't turn. So I'm going to have to do some uh, shaving on the shroud so I can get this fan to turn again. When the engine was not sitting on the cross member, it was kind of sitting at an angle. And it had the front of the engine pointing up. And the fan cleared when I put all this stuff together. So now I'm going to have to get up under there, like I said, and shave the bottom out a little bit so this fan appearance because it's rubbing it so I don't know if it's because well it's got to be because of the shroud it's the aftermarket shroud uh, hopefully when we put the hood on there it's not going to be too high across here because aftermarket stuff sometimes is not like the original so I'm just going to jump on in there with my uh, little air saw just cut out a little piece right at the tip of it right where that bottom blade is just cut a little bit out down there and uh, hopefully we'll be good to go on that and then I can finally let it down I did get the oil pressure hose hooked up to the uh, oil filter housing just took out the oil oil light sending unit so I can hook up the oil pressure gauge so so yeah, let me do some shaving on that, get that fan back turning, and uh, 
we can let it down. We basically threw it at the bottom. Oh, and I also did take just one of the transmission lines will stop up. It was this one. So I took it loose from the transmission first, and it blew all kind of dirt out of it on the other end. So I got to hook these up to the radiator. We'll be good on transmission. Return pipes and lines or whatever we want to call it. So let me get this shroud fixed and we will uh, get some cooling in this thing. Well, before I do that, slow down. I gotta hook up the temperature sensor. Well, I gotta hook up the temperature gauge. So take that temperature sensor out. Hook up the manual temperature gauge. Then we get cooling in it, fire it up. So when it rains, it pours. So the Pontiac Le Mans has been fighting me and fighting me. So I finally got this thing fired up again with the radiator and everything. We got the gauges hooked up. Found out it's got good oil pressure. About 20 running, almost 60. Why is that high speed? I think I might be wrong. I can't remember. I should be right. We'll go through it again. I'm just so discouraged right now. Put not even a half a gallon of water in it. And water's pouring at the bottom. And I didn't notice while I've been up under here that freeze plug is rusted. You can probably try and get some light up here. Not only one freeze plug either. We talking about We're talking about couples of freeze plugs. Freeze plug right there. Freeze plug right there. It's got a hole rusted in it. And then you come around to the other side right behind where the flange is there's a freeze plug up there you can't see it it's leaking and I think there's a third one behind the motor mount kind of hard to see I don't know if it's leaking but I know the one right here at the front I don't know if you can see that kind of hard to get the camera in there but that's rust right on the tip so I got two freeze plugs I know on this side leaking I don't know about this side this side here look like it might have some surface rust I tried pecking on it probably gonna start leaking there's one behind the motor mount and there I know the one behind the starter is good because when I had the starter off, I seen it. It was it was good. It looked good. I think this side might be all right. Hopefully, the one behind the transmission is not uh, leaking. But definitely this front one here. If you can see that rust. That one's leaking, and the one behind the flange. So, in order to get these manifold bolts off, on Pontiac, the bolts, they point down. They're not like normal manifolds, like on a GM. They point down and go up through the head. So, I'm going to have to get those loose in order to get this manifold off here so I can get to those freeze plugs. So, probably, probably had to end up snatching the motor out of this thing. I guarantee you. Don't want to, but I'm probably going to have to. So I'm going to get at it, try and get this manifold off there. Hopefully I can get it off and get to those freeze plugs uh, without having to pull the motor out. Looks like you got new shocks on the front. Well, one side looked new. 
you know, a lot of scaly stuff. So anyway, I'm gonna get to work on this uh, manifold and see what I can do. So I finally got the exhaust manifold off and you can see that rusted out freeze plug right there. It's got a pretty good size hole in it all the way through. That's that first one. And then that's the one that was up under the motor mount. It's rusted. And that back one, ooh, it looks real bad. Let me get some light. That back one back there. Look at that one. Rusty dusty. So I'm going to try and pick these out of here and put the new ones in and go to the other side and do those. I'm praying that the ones behind the flywheel is not rusted, but it's 150% chance they probably are. But uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put these side ones in and I'm going to pressure test the system. I'm going to try and pressure test the system with it dry and uh, that will let me know if I got any leaks and uh, if it holds then we know that the freeze plugs behind the flywheel is good so hopefully those are good hopefully the water just set in this side of the block this is the worst side here so I'm gonna get these popped out and get the new ones in so I've been wrestling with these freeze plugs on this passenger side for a couple hours and I finally got these out these were just rotted in half I tell you so this is one that I attempted to put in <laughs> deformed it so I, I bought a box of eight it was only eight left so we got plenty but I did get I did get the three in there so this side is done. That the one that's over the motor mount right there in the center, that's the job. So I got the engine jacked up, got the motor mount off. So now I need to move on over to the driver's side, which I don't have to take the manifold off, just the starter and take the motor mount off. And we'll get that side done. So you're gonna do these. I say just buy a box of them. I did buy a kit of brass ones, but they didn't fit. And no one in town had some brass ones. I would rather go back with brass because they don't uh, rot out. But couldn't find none. Found some on uh, Amazon, but it'll be another week before I can get them. So, I'm just going to have to go back with steel. So we got enough to go back with on the sides of the engine. I'm praying that the ones behind the flywheel is not rusted out. Uh, but we won't know until we get those other ones in on the other side. Which I think the one over the starter is not, it's not bad. But I can see some rust pitting on the first two. On your front one and then the uh, center one I mean. So while I got it in the air I'm going to go ahead and put them in there and if we have to which I hope we don't I'm not pulling this engine out I would rather pull the transmission back drop the transmission uh, probably set up the lift get up on the lift drop the transmission scoot the transmission back pop the flywheel off and put those freeze plugs in there uh, now it does have sound on the heads right here but I've never really seen these on the heads right out it's usually the ones on the side of the block because that's where the water mainly sits uh, or coolant but anyway I'm going to call it a night this side's done I got to drill out these bolts on the manifold where the header pipe goes they were rusted oops <laughs> I tried heating it up and uh, they wouldn't come out so I snapped them off so I'm going to have to drill those out and put new bolts in there and then I can put the manifold back on that side 
but that's going to be the last thing I do. First thing I'm going to do is get that side with the freeze plugs taken care of and uh, then I worry about the manifold. I think I got a new set of gaskets. These are metal. You can clean them up. I mean they're not torn. Just, that one's a little bent. I might just clean it up if I don't have any. Stick it back on there. Torque it down. Put some anti-seize on the bolts so they won't rust in the uh, heads again. And uh, hopefully the cooling system holds water and uh, this thing don't run hot and we'll probably flush it out before we put cooling in there flush all that rusty crap out of there and uh, hopefully that turns out good so I'm gonna call it a night and get on the other side and I'll show you what I've done if I can get a camera under there Alright, as you can see, the old 350 runs pretty damn good. You wouldn't have never thought an engine that looked so rusty, so deserted, so abandoned, wouldn't run that good. But there's no ticks, no knocks, it's got oil pressure. I think it's got like 10 PSI idling and around 40 at high speed. Uh, we put a new thermostat in it. I flushed out the cooling system. Well, I actually flushed out the block. Uh, did that and went ahead and put a thermostat in it. 
fill it up full of coolant. It's not running hot. It's got a 180 thermostat in it, and it's staying around 180. So, oh, engine runs real good. Uh, the next question is, how good is the transmission? Um, is it going to shift out? I still got to hook a vacuum line up to the module, to the carburetor, and I got to uh, bleed the brakes. For right now, we got drums all the way around, so I really want to get the brakes bled up on it, so that way we can at least drive it and see uh, how the transmission shifts. And also, I got to hook the throttle cable up too. Uh, I'm gonna have to drill this little stub off of here and put another one in there so the linkage can hook up. But other than that, cooling sensor works, power steering works, charging works, emission works, but we also got a disc brake conversion kit that was purchased for it. So we got the wire braided lines. I don't know when I'm going to put this on. He brought it over here. This is this is the bracket for Yes, spindle brackets. That's this holds the calipers on. I really don't want to take all this out of the box. But we got the dust covers. And those are the calipers. I already got the brake pads and stuff on. I think these are the calipers. One box is the spindles. Yeah, these are the spindles. I don't want to take all this out. I mean, if you have seen this great conversion kit before. I don't know where he got it from. I think he got it from like a car show. Somebody was out there selling a bunch of stuff. But we got the calipers, spindles. I think in this box over here. Rotors and they are slotted with the hose drilled and everything. So we got the rotors. The only thing we're missing is the brake booster, which he's going to bring one so we can put the brake booster. And uh, so, as of right now, I just want to get what's hooked up now is just the drum brakes, just enough just to ease it around corner and just see uh, how the transmission shifts and then we'll know the transmission's good and then after that we can uh, we can put uh, the disc brake conversion kit on the front only so I'm going to do the other stuff to it like the brakes throttle cable yada 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 get this thing where it go around the block and then uh, we will move along to something else on it. I mean, it's basically running. Uh, what else could it be? So, we will see.